everyone. So, welcome back. So, this is the part 3 for chapter 9 lecture in which in this chapter, I will focus on the method of superposition in finding the slope and deflection of the beams. So, what does it mean by method of superposition? So, we can use method of superposition to solve for the slope and deflection of a beam that is subjected to several concentrated and or distributed loading. So, that means if you have a beam that is has two or more type of loading exerted on the beam, so you can use this method of superposition. So, to help you uh, with this method, so you can refer to the appendix D at the backs of your textbook. So, if you look at the appendix D, so you will have a table like this. And the, the table have five parts. So, one is the beam and loading. So, the second one is elastic curve. Then, we have the maximum deflection and slope at the end. And finally, we have an equation of elastic curve. And the table can be divided into two parts. So, the first one is only for the cantilever uh, beam. And the second part is only for the simply supported beam. So how we can use this appendix? So if we look at the first situation here, let's say we have a cantilever beam with the P at the end. So if we were to draw how the beam we have, it will look like this. So we have an elastic curve where we have a Y max at the end of the beam. And the value of this y max is subjected to this value here. So PL cube over 3 EI. And then the slope at the end is denoted by this value here. And the overall of the equation of elastic curve is shown in this part here. So you can check this with the uh, video in part 1 in which we already saw for this question. Okay, so in... So basically, for the cantilever beam, so we have three different scenario. So one is the concentrated loading, so one is the uniform loading, and the third one is the moment loading. So for the sim simply supported, so we have four different scenario. So one is when the P is at the center of the beam. So uh, the second one, when the P is slightly off center, and the third one is when we have a uniform loading and finally when we have a moment at the end of the loading. So for all this example or loading, so we have the correlated elastic curve and also the other uh, parameter that is associated with that beam. In which we can use the method of superposition to determine the slope and deflection at point B. So, before we can start solving this question, so we need to relate this loading shown in this question here to the appendix D. And the most relevant cases in appendix D is the case number 2 in which we have a cantilever with the uniform loading. Alright. To answer this question, so we need to break down this uh, loading in the question into two parts so that we can use this case to answer the question. So this is the original position in which we have the uniform loading starting from C to B at length of L over 2. So we can transpose this into two parts. So the first loading is when we have a full uh, uniform loading. Okay, so from A to B at length of L, okay, plus the second loading in which we will have a beam inversely, the loading is applied inversely from A to C at length of L over 2. So in the original loading, so we can, uh, because the loading is exerted downward, so you can expect expect this beam to go downward, okay? And we will have a y and a slope of theta over here, okay? And the same thing with the loading number one, except the magnitude of y may be bigger because we have a whole length of what uh apa, uniform loading throughout the beam. So, we might have a deflection 
of y1 over here and also the slope of 1 over here. But in this case, okay, so case number 2, because this is only halfway, so we can assume that this looks like a beam with length of L over 2. So the beam will go this way, okay, upward, because the, the loading is exerted upward. And the rest of the beam doesn't have any loading, so it will have a straight line. And this will be our Y2, okay. So Y2 and we have a theta 2 over here, alright. So basically, Y2 is just a combination of beam deflection over here. Okay, so let's say Y A and also the length over here, which is Y B. Alright, so in total, so we can have Y is equal to Y1, okay, so plus Y2. So, value of y1 is straightforward. So, we can just take this value here. So, in which we can get the value of minus WL4 over 8EI. Okay. So, plus y2, which is consists of ya plus yb. Alright. So, for ya, it is also straightforward. So, in which we can get this uh, value here by changing the L into L over 2 and because this is going upward so we can get the value of positive W L over 2 power of 4 divided by 8 EI this is for YA okay and then we can plus with YB so the YB is just because the theta is already in tangent uh, is in radian so we have the theta 2 here, which is the same with the theta 2 here. And then we have the straight line over here. So we can just multiply this value to get the value of yb. Alright. So the value of yb, okay, so we can calculate it by just getting the value of uh, theta times the length of L2 over here. And for theta 2, the value will be this uh, ang slope here but you need to change it into the positive okay w l over 2 power of 3 divided 6 ei time l over 2 the length of this point here then we can get the value of yb so if you add up and expand this value so you can get the uh, final total for y is 41 wl power of 4 times 384 ei and it should be a negative because this value is going downward So we can do the same thing with theta. So in which we can get the total value of theta as theta 1 plus theta 2. Alright, so if we look into this theta here, so the angle from the tangent to the deflection is going downward. So this will be a negative. Meanwhile, for this one here, so from, from the tangent to the uh, deflection, the, the slope line is a positive going upward. So it's a positive. So we need to keep that in mind so we can use this uh, during the addition to get the total value of the theta. So we can directly also get the value from here. So in which for theta 1 is WL power of 3 over 6 EI. Okay, so plus because this is going upward, so it's a value of a positive value. So this will be WL over 2 power of 3 divided by 6 EI. Okay. So we can just directly add up this value and then we will get the value of 7 WL cube over 
Alright, so just by using this table, so we can get the value of slope and deflection at point B. For this video, so in which I have shown you how to use the method of superposition to determine the slope and the deflection uh, for the beam. Alright, so but before you go, so I have a surprise for you. Ta-da! So this is your take home quiz. So you need to solve the slope and deflection at point D of this simply supported beam by using the method of superposition. So I will give you the link to submit your quizzes. And to help you uh, to solve this answer, to solve this question, so you can use the information from the video in part 2. Alright, so good luck and see you in the next video. Thank you.